Welcome to the Debt Matters Podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from across Canada. I'm Wayne Kay, and coming up in today's show, we're going to talk about the record high consumer debt and high interest rates, and how are Canadians going to make it through. My guest today, Lee Taylor from LC Taylor, licensed insolvency trustee with offices in Winnipeg and Northwestern Ontario. Thanks for being here, Lee. Always nice to join you. Now, we had a a great discussion uh, last time we talked, and we got talking about something that I figure we could really dive a little bit more into, and that is kind of the economics of what's going on in Canada. And I know you keep your fingers on the pulse of this, but record high consumer debts, that's that's new, I believe. We're seeing some big numbers there. And then with the interest rates and everything else, how do you see this playing out for Canadians? Well, there's an awful lot of factors that, that are coming up, and they're all coming up together. Uh, low interest rates for many years. I think a lot, most people took advantage of that. Uh, and they built a, a corresponding lifestyle, you know, easy purchase of houses, interest rates were very low on mortgages. Uh, buying a new car was pretty easy. Uh, be, you know, don't have to pay for six months, these sorts of things. So everything was, was, was pretty good for a while. Now, then we started to get inflation. Well, what we really started to do is get the pandemic. And the, the economy was flooded with dollars. It's really what it came down to. Uh, the, the government was subsidizing everybody, throwing money around uh, to try to alleviate a problem, but really creating new problems in doing that. And that resulted in the inflation. And inflation inflation is an insidious problem. It, it affects probably most the people that can least afford it. Uh, you know, you get, for example, senior citizens are on fixed incomes and pensions and these sorts of things, and suddenly you get 8% inflation. Well, that means that what they buy with their uh, money it goes 8% less than it used to. And when you're sticking with, with rent, that's not going down or changing, and food that keeps going up, that puts a real uh, puts them in a real difficult position. So we're faced with, with all of that, plus during the pandemic, an awful lot of people were... Uh, unemployed. If you were working for a restaurant, I can bet you you were off maybe collecting unemployment insurance, but certainly not uh, getting any tips for your work and all these sorts of things. So your income was reduced considerably. So when you put all those things together, it's it's really hard to see us avoiding an ep- economic fallout with all of this. There's just too many problems all coming together. So I think we have to pay the price for low interest rates or money being thrown at us by the government uh, and all the problems that that created. Mm -hmm. Now, when we watch kind of forecasting from economists, they're saying, well, it shouldn't be too bad. We should be okay. Uh, Does the word recession, is that play a part into what we may see with all the high consumer debt and people that can't afford all the money they've been uh, putting on their cards in the last while? Well, it depends which economist you ask how bad it's going to be. I think they all agree that we're headed towards some sort of a recession. Uh, and I'm not sure what recession means to most people. There was an old uh, adage back in Economics 101 many years ago. It said, recession is when your neighbor is laid off. A depression is when you lose your job. And a panic is when your wife loses her job. So yeah. the effects of recession really depend to a large degree on your own personal situation. Mm, yeah. And there's certain communities that they just don't see these problems. Uh, they kind of almost become recession proof because uh, they're in industries, a lot of industry towns that don't have it. But that being said, with the high consumer debt, I thought it would be great for us to discuss what does that look like for Canadians that they're starting to sweat over this now. They're starting to see that things aren't going to work out. They're not going to be able to pay this off. So in your business, when you look at that, what does that look like? At what point do they say, okay, we are actually in trouble? Well, we don't have the statistics out yet from the government with respect to uh, how we ended off in uh, 2022. But we've got certainly our own statistics and have developed those. Uh, and for the first two, two and a half months of this year, we're looking at uh, record highs 
or uh, insolvency situations, whether they're consumer proposals or bankruptcies or workouts. Uh, so I think the, I guess you call it, tsunami of debt problems is starting to, to come forward. Mm. And, and that's sort of expected because when you look at people with debt problems historically, uh, it's usually, uh, oh, 18 months to 24 months after the economic problem starts before people actually are in a position emotionally to do something about it. Uh, they, they lose their job or whatever, uh, and or mortgage rates go up. Uh, they know they're in financial difficulty. They don't know what to do about it. They try cutting back, but changing your standard of living is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, so they suffer through it, uh, max out their credit cards, etc., and usually they can last for a year and a half to two years before they get to the point where uh, they're they're being sued or garnished or the mortgage is going into foreclosure or something. And that's where we are with a lot of people right now, especially with tax season coming up and people are finding out that suddenly they owe three or $4,000 more than they anticipated in their tax return because they took COVID money or small businesses took COVID relief money and they're supposed to be paying it back. And they realize that their, their, their cash flow is just not going to permit it. So now they're getting in a situation where they have to actually go out and seek professional help uh, to solve the problem. And they're not alone. Uh, there's just an awful lot of people that are going to be in that position. Mm -hmm. And when you see people coming through the doors or in many of your businesses, what is it looking like? What, what are they coming in for? Because of the uh, job loss or is it because of the interest rates going up with mortgages? A lot of people just had uh, variable mortgages. And I hear that makes a major difference in a lot of the housing payments. Well, sure. Uh, probably more than half of the payment that you're making every month is going to be for interest. And if you go up from a, a 27 uh, rate of mortgage suddenly to a 5.5 or 5.9, you've doubled that payment. So that, you know, on an, on an average mortgage where you're, you're paying $1,200, $1,500 in interest, now you're paying $2,400 in interest. And that just kills your budget right then and there. Right. And then on oh, top so of that, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, no. on top of that, you add in what you were just mentioning. They find out they had get a bill for three thousand dollars through the government uh, for taking COVID money, and that was taxable. Now, how do you get out of that? And then you go to the grocery store and find out that food's gone up by eight percent. Yeah. So you can cut back a little bit here and a little bit there, but a lot of people are finding out that there's just too much coming too quickly, uh, and all the other things. It's, it's sort of a, a snowball effect, you know. And you find out that things are a little tight at home. Uh, you end up arguing with your spouse about uh, what you should be cutting out of it. Uh, and you have differences of opinion on that. And then you end up with uh, something less than matrimonial bliss trying to settle the problem. Uh -huh. That creates even more hardships. So it's, it's a real snowball effect. The earlier you get started on trying to find a solution to this, the, the better your chances of finding a solution that works. Uh, if you started two years ago when, when you realized that there were going to be problems, then you probably don't have as serious a problem today. But if you went along with the ride, uh, you took the money and uh, some people paid down debts with it, but more often other people uh, used it as sort of uh, found money and, and spent it on something that would otherwise be deemed a little frivolous perhaps. Uh, thinking they're going to come out of this this pandemic without too many problems, and everything starts to 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 build up, and now you find that an awful lot of people are going to uh, not have much in the way of solutions to their problems other than seeking uh, help through the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. Mm -hmm. So, can you walk us through that? Because what you're talking about, I'm sure, is exactly what a lot of people are feeling. And the one thing, I've done enough of these shows and learned enough that the one common phrase that's used is, I wished I'd seen you earlier. Boy, I've heard that lots. <laughs> Probably every every free consultation that you do, because the uh, first one is initial consultation is free. And I bet you everybody walks out saying that exact phrase. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Well, well, part of it is to go back to the beginning of it when you're having 
when you first see signs of the problems, uh, can you start cutting back on your budget a little bit, redoing your budget, or, or in many cases, making a budget so that you can realize that, well, if I have a little less income, uh, what are the absolute necessities and, and what uh, non-necessities can can I cut out of the budget? That's maybe the first step. And then that stops you from uh, taking your credit cards out and subsidizing your, your lack of income uh, with with credit because that's a, 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 a trip down a dangerous path because you always have to pay it back and it's harder to pay it back than it is to get it in the first place. So so that's the kind of thing that we like to see people doing. A little further down the road doesn't mean that you have to get a second job working for an extra day or half a day or something on the weekends to try and make ends meet. That works for some people, not for everybody. If you're going to be paying more in child care than you are going to be making by working on a Saturday, it sort of defeats the purpose. Uh, then you look at things like, um, can you dispose of some of your assets? Uh, if you've got two cars, can you get by with one? Even if you uh, have a car loan on the second car, etc., at least by selling it off and paying off the loan, that uh, helps your cash flow a little bit because you're not paying the uh, the the bank for the for the car loan. Uh, so th- those sorts of things can work uh, if you get to them early enough. Mm-hmm. And if you wait and they've, they've already seized your car because you couldn't keep up the car payments and you still owe the money on it, uh, you you get to the point where you're you're having all sorts of problems at home because you're arguing about money uh, and the credit cards that you've kited, which means using one to pay off the other and they both get higher, uh, you, you get to a point where you can't even afford the minimum payments on it. Then you start saying, well, you know, I wish I had thought about this earlier, but... Uh, if I can't make the payments, uh, you're lucky if you still have a job, but you may lose your job if you get garnished. Uh, and if you couldn't afford to live on what you were making before, taking you know 30% of your wages to pay one of your creditors with a court order isn't going to help a lot. So it's it's easy to see how, without too much trouble, you, you get yourself into a lot of trouble just by either ignoring it or not taking reasonable steps to try to reduce the problem. And and it's human nature. A lot of people will say, well, yeah, you know, I lost my job or whatever. I got my hours cut back or whatever. I'll go look for another job and I'll get one in another month or something. And, and you know, one month becomes two months and then it becomes three months. Then when you do get another job, it turns out that you're you're only making about, you know, 75 or 80 percent of what you're making before. Or you have to take a job where you have to work yourself back up the ladder to get where you were. And in the meantime, you got more debt and less income and... It's, it's sort of like a downward spiral. And it's a, emotionally hard on people, too. Uh-huh. So we really encourage people, come in and talk to, to uh, a, a licensed and self trustee and, and find out what options are available. Are, are some of these options still available to you? Uh, can you get out of it by budgeting or whatever? And the, and the LIT will be able to tell you uh, exactly where you stand, what the options are, and hopefully you have enough options available to you at that point that uh, you can make some choices that are in your own best interest. And, and you're there to guide them along, right? Because say our first job is to help people to solve problems for them. Uh, and a lot of the people we talk to don't go bankrupt and don't file proposals and, and we can find other ways in which they can overcome the problem. And uh, that's, that's a win-win situation for them and for us. Oh, well, that's interesting. That that's got to because a lot of people worry. They stress about, well, if I'm going to contact a, a licensed insolvency trustee, that means I'm going to the way of the bankruptcy, and they just they hate that word. They're scared of that word. Sure, and they get a little discouraged and everything, and that's sort of part of the whole problem too. Uh, but we really encourage people to contact us and find out what it's all about. Find out what the rules are, what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, and help, we'll help you to uh, create a path through these difficulties. Now, it's like taking medicine. Sometimes the medicine doesn't taste all that good, but um, you have to solve it. You mm-hmm. have to solve the problem. And you always solve the problem. Yes. <laughs> I think that's the most important piece is that it, to have somebody uh, it, professionally regulated in the country looking over where you're at just, I think the, the just the pure volume of what you see 
will give them just hope because you you pretty much have seen it all. Yeah, we've been at this a long time. Uh, we've helped an awful lot of people. But I would put a caveat in there that, that uh, licensed insolvency trustees, they have to declare themselves as licensed insolvency trustees in any ads or whatever. So it's pretty easy to identify them. And they're professionals that have been trained and have the experience and are licensed by the federal government. Federal government audits them and makes sure that uh, everything is is being done properly. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a code of ethics that they have to follow, etc. That's not always true of everybody that calls themselves credit counselors. Um, a credit counselor, there is no uh, legal definition uh, for credit counseling. Anybody can be a credit counseling if they hold out a shingle. Uh, and they don't always have, the, well, they don't have the tools that a licensed insolvency trustee has, such as proposals and binding situations or bankruptcies. Uh, oftentimes, oftentimes we're, we're seeing now where you, you find somebody online and they say, yeah, we can help you, you can send us a couple of thousand dollars, then you do that. And then they turn around and say, well, no, we can't help you, but we can refer you to a licensed insolvency trustee. Really? Yeah, that's been happening more and more. Wow, and then you're out the, the two grand or however much they take from you. Yeah, and, and it's a little bit of a wake-up call when they find out they could have gone to license and solve to trustee and had free consultations at For, the beginning of it, yeah. saving yeah. themselves a lot of trouble and pain. Wow. Okay, well, I think this has been a, a wonderful uh, chat. Any final words you want to share? Well, just the things we always talk about. Uh, you know, look at your own situation and uh, give us a call. It doesn't hurt, doesn't cost you anything, and you'll get some good answers to some questions you may not have thought of. Earlier, the better. Right. Lee, thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure for you, too. Thanks, Wayne. Well, my guest today, Lee Taylor from LC Taylor, Licensed Insolvency Trustee. And to get that free consultation, you can go check out the website, lctaylor.com. That's where you can schedule the free consult or you can give them a phone call, lctaylor.com. And that's it for today's Debt Matters podcast. Just make sure you subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And of course, for more information, you can always check out debtmatters.ca. Thanks for listening. 